Judges chapter 6. The Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and for seven years he gave them into the hands of the Midianites. Because the power of Midian was so oppressive, the Israelites prepared shelters for themselves in mountain clefts, caves, and strongholds. Everybody say strongholds. Whenever the Israelites planted their crops, the Midianites, Amalekites, and other eastern peoples invaded the country. They camped on the land and ruined the crops all the way to Gaza and did not spare a living thing for Israel, neither sheep nor cattle nor donkeys. They, come up, they came up with their livestock and their tents like swarms of locusts. It was impossible to count them or their camels. They invaded the land to ravage it. Midian so impoverished the Israelites that they cried out to the Lord for help. And so I'm going to tell you the title of my message, but it's going to make more sense later, I promise. So hang in there. The title of my message is called Get a Grip. Get a Grip. Let's pray. God, we're thankful for this moment. We're thankful for each person that's in this service at this time. We know that it is not by accident. And so I pray that you would open their hearts and their minds to receive a word from you, God. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so um, we find in our text today the children of Israel, God's chosen people, um, the people that he delivered from slavery, we find these people seeking out, hiding out in strongholds. Everybody say strongholds. Now, strongholds appears at least 50 times in the Bible. Um, in the Old Testament, the, the people would go to a stronghold in order to protect themselves. They were seeking safety from their enemy. And so in the passage that we read, um, the Midianites represent the enemy in that and um, so it's extremely difficult to get past a stronghold. Um, it was defined as a fortress with difficult access. Um, anybody ever seen The Princess Bride? Raise your hand if you've seen The Princess Bride. I need to know what kind of people I have. Not very many. This is such a sad day for me. At 8.30, there was very few as well. I feel like we're not leading this church well. If you haven't seen The Princess Bride, it's such a great movie. Anyways, when I looked up different images of what a stronghold looks like, all that showed me reminded me of the, the castle in Princess Bride. Um, it's just this fortress of stone, brick, and it's uh, ginormous. And in this passage, you find God's people hiding out in that stronghold. Everybody say Stronghold. Um, in the time I studied about strongholds over the past few months, it, it's either talking about how they were seeking safety in a stronghold or how a stronghold was being tore down. And if you read the surrounding chapters and verses in, in that, that story that I read, you'll find that the Israelites, God's people, just have this continual decline of their spiritual state. Um, I mean, it doesn't start off well when it starts off with uh, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. That's not a good way to start things. We find them here just seeking shelter because they've turned their back on God. They're seeking shelter in these strongholds, in these caves. And they were forced to abandon their homes, and that's why they were going there. But the problem is that these strongholds were not meant to be permanent dwelling places. And so we find them living here, trying to survive, and that tells us the desperate place that they're in. I mean, they're planting crops, they're, they're trying to live in this stronghold, that they've, they're trying to raise their cattle and, and all of that, but the word tells us that every time they planted their crops, the Midianites, the enemy of, of the Israelites, would take it. And so all of their livelihood was ravaged, I don't usually like that word ravaged, by the Midianites. In verse 3, whenever they planted their crops, they ruined it. They didn't spare a living thing. Not sheep, not cattle, not donkeys. And then in verse 5, it says they invaded the land to ravage it. So they were continually invaded by their enemies, and they were continually left with nothing. And so it kind of reminded me when I read this that our world has turned its back on God. And if we continue in this direction, turning our back on God, then the enemy will just have fun ravaging our land and leaving us with nothing. Now, the Bible not only talks about these physical structures called strongholds, but it also talks about spiritual strongholds. 
And we may not have a physical, in the flesh enemy like the Midianites trying to take everything from us, but we do have an enemy. Our enemy, the devil, he, he just looks around on, and, and the Bible says, seeking whom he may devour. His hope is to leave you with nothing. His hope is to take everything you have and leave you with nothing. He wants to ravage your mind, affect your actions, and leave you with nothing. So he uses these spiritual strongholds within your minds to keep you from moving forward, to keep you stuck in the same cycle, the same pattern, the same habit, the same weakness, a stronghold. Everybody say stronghold. It's that one mindset or that one attitude, that old, difficult, discouraging habit or challenge that has a grip on you and keeps you from moving forward. It's that thing that no matter how much time passes, how many seasons come and go, it still won't go away. It's a stronghold. It lives up to both sides of this compound word, strong enough to grip you and stubborn enough to hold on. Strong hold. I was on this um, family trip a couple of weeks ago. I don't call them vacations when the kids are with me because it's not much of a vacation, right? All my, all my mamas are like, yep, you're right. So we call it a family trip. Well, I do in my mind, just to remind myself of all the work that's going to go into this family trip. So we were at... <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, and so we were getting ready to ride this ride at Disney and it was a new ride. We never rode it before. So we were super excited about it. And, um, I didn't know much about it. I just, I mean, it was called Mickey and Minnie's runaway railway. And so I thought, oh, that sounds like, that's cool. That sounds low key and, uh, and whatnot. And so we finally get up to the front of the line and that's our turn. And we're in this little like boxcar type thing. And so we excitedly get into our row and I, I sit down. And before I can even sit down, I have Ellie and Zion on the same row as me. And Ellie is 11 and Zion is 8. They're super pumped about the ride too. So pumped, in fact, that they take the safety bar and they just as aggressive as possible pull it down. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but um, I'm, I'm not as little as an 11-year-old and an 8-year-old. And so when they did that, I li it literally broke the lanyard thing that I had. That's how tight it was and aggressive it was. It broke my lanyard, and it pushed into this baby mama, like this, this belly. It's still there from having the children. And so it pushed into it. It was painful. I couldn't move from here down. I was like paralyzed and I literally couldn't move and I was like at first I was like oh that's a little tight and then it just immediately was like no that's way too tight for this big mama and I'm struggling my kids are just staring at me like what are they gonna do and I had no idea I was uncomfortable I was a little bit scared and because I didn't know what the ride was about and I thought I'm gonna break a hip or something during this ride and I can't afford I can't afford to do that okay and so I was like I don't know what is taking I don't know what's taking place but the grip was paralyzing and that's kind of what a stronghold feels like. It will grip you so tight that you feel like you don't have the ability to break free. A spiritual stronghold is the result of wrong thinking or beliefs that have taken root in your life. A stronghold in your mind is um, they are contrary to God's thoughts. Um, they're most often inspired by the devil's lies and because you believe them about yourself, about God, about others, they give the devil a strong hold on your actions, your behaviors, and your habits. And the problem is the, the more strongly you believe these lies, the stronger the hold that he has on you. So we're going to talk about that grip that the enemy has on so many people, paralyzing them and the grip that dictates your actions and your behaviors. So the first thing that you gotta do, I'm more of a, like a teacher teacher thing, so I've got like a three points, I got three steps that you can take to uh, get a grip in your life, okay? So the first one is this, identify the grip. Identify the grip. 
What has a hold on you? Now, if you did the homework for my last sermon, you probably already realized what it is that, that Satan has a hold on you. But if you didn't and you need some examples, I've got lots of them for you today because I'm very practical and I want you to be able to leave here with things that you can implement in your life. And so identify the grip that has a hold on you. So maybe you have a stronghold of judgment. Maybe you're somebody who continually judges other people and you just have this judgmental spirit. Now, when I say all of these things, hear it in balance because at one time or another, we've all judged somebody. But I'm talking about, is this something that ravages your mind, that the enemy has invaded your space and it holds you back from moving forward? Are you judgmental? Do you pass more judgments than the Supreme Court? If you do, then you know that you're a judgmental, you have a judgmental spirit. Maybe you're a cheater. Maybe you lie. If you're somebody who just has a hard time telling the truth and speaking the truth, maybe that's what's holding you back. Um, Quick to doubt. Maybe you're somebody that has um, anxiety that has a stronghold on you and you can't move forward because you're so um, held back by that anxiety. Maybe you have an explosive temper. Fragile self-image. Distrust for authority. Sexual temptation. Maybe you gossip nonstop. Maybe you have a jealous spirit. Maybe it's outside physical habits. Now, these ones are the ones everybody likes to point to and judge because you can see them. But the ones in the mind and in your heart are just as detrimental. Outside physical habits like alcohol. Maybe that's what you turn to at all times and you can't move on your day without having some alcohol. Uh, Not the margaritas that are not on the patio, I promise you. (laughs) Maybe it's cigarettes that has a stronghold on you. Maybe it's drugs. Maybe it's prescription drugs. Maybe it's pride, bitterness, depression, manipulation. Maybe you have a religious mindset. Maybe it's unforgiveness that holds you back. And then these two, I feel like, are... They, they have, man, the enemy has a stronghold us because I feel like there's so many people walking around angry, angry. And then the last one, fear. Fear grips us so many times. So what has a stronghold on you? You have to identify the grip. We want to deal with why you keep getting tied to and bound by the same thing. Let's look a little deeper than your... Um, than your behaviors that we see on the outside. Why? Why do you keep going back to that mindset? Why do you keep going back to that habit, that behavior, that pattern? What are you gripped by that you need to let go of, get rid of, stay away from? What is your pattern? What's your pattern that keeps you in this stuck stage, this stuck season? Because we're supposed to be progressing as Christians. We're supposed to be looking more and more like Jesus as the time goes on. But so many of us are just in this stuck season. So the first thing you have to do is identify the grip. Second thing that you need to do, loosen the grip. How do I get free from this? After I identify it, I, I want to know how do I get free from this. Um, the, the strongholds in our mind are, are these areas of our thinking that are dominated by the enemy. And I have this uh, scripture that I found as I was studying all the strongholds in the Bible in Isaiah 13, 22, and it kind of goes with um, his, my husband's message where he talked about hyenas. That happened, right? I didn't just think of that. You, talk, you talked about Easter, Easter Sunday. Sometimes, you know, the mom brain, sometimes you just aren't sure. Um, It says, hyenas will inhabit her strongholds. And I just got to thinking because I'm a, I'm a competitive person and I don't like to lose, especially to the enemy. And I just got to thinking hyenas are known for their howling sounding like laughter. And this says hyenas will inhabit her strongholds. And I thought all I could envision was when I allow those strongholds to, to take hold of me and, hold, and grip me, the enemy has invaded my stronghold in my mind and he's just laughing about it. And what a picture that is. And I don't like to lose. And that kind of makes me a little bit angry about it. But I wanted to share that with you because 
if, if we allow him, because that's what we do, if we allow him to just ravage our mind, he could care less and exp- actually that's what he desires. Now I gotta find where I was at here. Hold on just a second. Okay, how do we loosen the grip? How do we get free? The apostle Paul talks about how God has equipped us to deal with these thoughts that do not line up with the word of God because strongholds in our mind and I feel like even the physical habits that we display, everything starts in the mind. These areas where we're deceived and dominated by the enemy. Um, the Apostle Paul tells us how to overcome that in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 5. And if you've been in church for any length of time, you've heard this passage before. But as I say, uh, hearing it and knowing about it is way different than living it out and obeying it. And so we're going to read it again because this is exactly how you loosen the grip. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, these weapons have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take every thought to make it obedient to Christ. We have the power through him to demolish these strongholds. And so what that's telling us, how do I get free? How do I loosen the grip? It's saying we need to take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. What this means is that there are going to be thoughts that come in your brain that are not God thoughts. If you do not reject those thoughts and replace them with the truth of God's word, then they will become strongholds in your mind. And strongholds don't just sit in your mind doing nothing. They produce actions, behaviors, and habits that no matter how hard you try, seem impossible to get rid of. It's like a boat that is filling up with water. You can grab a bucket and work really hard at getting the water out of the boat, but the water is not the problem. The problem is that there's a hole in the bottom of your boat. Until you plug the hole, You're going to keep getting water in the boat. All the hard work in the world will not get the water out. That hole in the bottom of the boat is like a stronghold. It's something you believe that causes certain behaviors or habits. You can try really hard to get rid of the behavior, but like the water, it'll just keep coming back. You cannot get rid of the habit until you change what you believe. That's how you plug the hole. When you change what you believe, you will change what you do. The Bible says, as you think in your heart, so will you be. So when you change what you believe, you'll change what you do. An example of that. I'm not good enough, so I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not good enough. That's a lie. Because God wants me to do that, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. That's the truth. I'm never going to be able to quit that addiction. That's a lie. He has you fenced in. I'm not strong enough to withstand that temptation. That's a lie. And Satan has you fenced in. He's constructed this tall, thick stronghold around that one flaw. And he's placed himself squarely between God's help and your stronghold. So think of it this way. Here's your stronghold around your mind. I believe that I can't do it. I've never been good enough to do that. That's not not me. I've always been like this. I'm going to stay like this. I'm not good enough. I'm too afraid. And then God's help is right here on the other side. So this is where Satan places himself, fencing you in your stronghold. So how do I loosen the grip of that stronghold? Okay, let's go back to my Disney story. The Disney employee was literally standing right there. Wasn't far down the the path or anything like that. She was literally standing right there and staring at me. She was watching me struggle. She saw the fear in my eyes. Uh, She saw that the grip was paralyzing me and I was in struggle mode. 
she saw that I was not enjoying life at that moment. <laughs> and I had to, <laughs> I had to, you're envisioning it happening, I can tell. It was not good. And so I had to make a quick decision before she gave the all clear and the ride takes off and, ev- and I find myself on a ride that everybody's enjoying, but I'm still bound. And so when I look over at the employee, in my mind, I was thinking, you see me struggling. In my mind, I'm saying, you know the bar is too tight. Why are you not releasing it and helping me? Here's the thing. You cannot fight strongholds in your mind in your mind. Man, have I learned that, especially recently. I have a lot of conversations in my mind. (laughs) It's not good all the time. It's not good. But here's what I chose to do in that moment. Can you lift the bar up for a minute? (laughs) She lifted it. I can move comfortably. And then we replaced it where it was supposed to be. And I enjoyed the ride and it was amazing. Why do we try to fight these strongholds in our mind? when we need to open our mouth and speak out loud to that struggle. In Jeremiah 23, 29, it, God says, is, my word, is not my word like a fire and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? He's saying, as you meditate on God's word and speak it out loud, it will burn down and break apart the wrong thoughts and lies of the enemy that you have believed. So his word is like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. So imagine that stronghold. And as I speak his word out loud, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Um, If God is for me, who can be against me? Um, He, you know, say as many as you want. But as I do that, his word is like a hammer breaking that stronghold down into pieces. The more and more you do it. But you see hammering through a thick wall or a thick stronghold, you don't get to the other side with one punch or one hit. Breakthrough comes from consistently and faithfully punching back. So you loosen the grip by getting a word to speak out loud. And then you also loosen the grip by having someone to hold you accountable. Now, we don't like that. In this world today, we don't like that. We want to keep our secrets and our struggles to ourselves. But you're going to need some help. And so having somebody to pray with you and hold you accountable is key to loosening the grip. In James 5.16, it says this, Make this your common practice. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you can live together, whole and healed. It says, make this your common practice. You need people to help you overcome. Because Satan indwells the domain of shadows and secrets, but God lives in the land of light and honesty. So you can continue to back down and stay in the grip of your stronghold for as long as you live. You can. And I watch people do it. But now more than ever, It's time to face it head on. In a world that continues to just get more and more divided, it's time for you to receive freedom so that you can enlist in the greatest fight of our lives. Being bound by a stronghold is not what Jesus died for. He came to give us life and life to the fullest. It is time for the true worshipers to arise. And so lastly, I want to tell you, get a grip on Jesus. All throughout the Bible, you will find that it refers to Jesus as our stronghold. In Psalm 94, 22, it says, But the Lord has become my stronghold and my God, the rock of my refuge of my refuge. Psalm 18:2 it says, "The Lord is my rock, my fortress and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold." In Nahum it says, "The Lord is good, a strength and stronghold in the day of trouble." 
He knows, he recognizes, cares for, and understands fully those who take refuge and trust in him. He is my strength and my stronghold. He is my refuge, my defense, my high tower. He is the inaccessible place to the enemy. This is where I find safety, protection, strength, and most of all, freedom from the grip of the enemy. We have to have faith that he's going to do what he says. We have to believe his word no matter what our lives currently look like. Because there is a strategy in pulling down those strongholds. And I don't know if you, I don't know if you're going to leave here and actually do what I'm instructing you to do. But those of you who take hold of this and do it, I am going to literally see the freedom all over your face when you come back in here. And that's my prayer for you. It has always been my heart that no one would live beneath what God has for them. That has been, that's why I started Vibrant Women. And that's what my heart has always been. That God has this amazing, abundant life for us. And yet we choose to be suckered in by the enemy. We choose to get fenced in by the lies that he tells us. We choose to let others dictate our joy. When, when we have everything we need to pull down that stronghold. Now it's not easy. It's not easy. But you have to develop a new pattern in your life. In 1 Samuel 22.5, it says this. But the prophet God said to David, do not stay in the stronghold. Go into the land of Judah. Now, I don't know if you know it or not, but I'm going to teach it to you. Judah means praise. And so what I want to tell you today is don't stay in the stronghold. But praise your way into a breakthrough. If you continue reading that passage in Judges, it says uh, when they finally turn to, to the Lord, God says back to them all these ways in which he has been faithful to, him, to them. You know, I was here at this time. I did this for you. I provided this. It says all of that. And then the very last thing that he says is, but you have not listened to me. When we choose to not listen to him, how can we expect him to reciprocate that protection and that safety when we choose to turn our back on him? I don't want to be found fearing other people's opinions more than I fear God. So no matter who you are today, we have one thing in common. We all went through this global pandemic together, didn't we? We all had to deal with that. And I'm not real convinced that we know how to come out of that. I feel like there is this grip of fear, of anger that it has caused. But it's time to break free from that. We have a world to save. And it's going to take every single one of us in our own special, unique gifting. But it takes a healthy and whole person. So we got to break free from those strongholds. we got to work on ourselves so that we know. In Ephesians, it says that it's his power within us. So it's not about you, but it's about you recognizing that he is, he is the one that I need. He's my strength, my provider. He is all that I need. And it's his power that works through us to overcome these, these uh, strongholds. And in, in the face of a world that spews lies constantly, I mean constantly, the time is pressing for us to know the word, know the truth, not just know it, but obey it. 